All right, we're gonna play a 2-5 session at Parks today. We're buying in for 1K. So excited I could barely walk straight or stay in the barriers. All right, I'm at Parks. I've only played here maybe like six times in my life. Um, I have no f idea who the regs are, no idea how the 2-5 plays. I haven't been here in forever. All that aside, first hand, poker's poker. We look down at king-queen off in the cutoff. The hijack is open to 15. Uh, some of the time we call, but we decide to three bet this time to 50. Folds back around to the hijack who four bets to 150. And we just snap, get out of the way. He shows ace jack off. I think this is a really bad four bet out of him. Either way, when we three bet this hand, it's a clear three bet fold, easy fold. All right, an orbit later, under the gun limps, middle position limps, and we are in the cutoff and look down at pocket tens. Now, we had seen that under the gun limped. We didn't see that middle position limped. So we only raise it to $20. This is too small though, even if I was correct and there was one limper, uh, I should have made it more like 25. But with two limpers, I think that I can make it 30 or 35 even. Charging the limper is the max to peel with all the trash. And with a hand like tens especially, it's never bad to not have to go 17 ways to a flop. However, in this case, both blinds call and both limpers call. So we're five ways to a flop with tens, which is not what you want, but uh, we get the flop we want. It's nine high. Comes nine, six, three, two diamonds, one heart, and it checks around to us quickly, and we bet $65. We're making up for lost time and don't want random overs to stick around for too cheap. Only under the gun calls, so we're heads up to the turn, which comes the king of hearts. Under the gun checks to us, and in-game I actually took a decent amount of time deciding whether or not to value bet here. Ultimately, I come to the decision that as long as we don't bet too big, I think we for sure get value from all his 9x, and all his flush draws, and it would be really not fun to check back and then let a diamond or an overcard come on the river and then face a bet from him. So for all those reasons, we bet $75 and he folds. We win the You win! In this hand, we're on the button with Queen Jack offsuit. The hijack, a medium rare old guy, limps the $5, the cutoff folds, and this is not a great hand by any stretch. It's bottom of our range, but we're on the button. We're not folding, so we raise to 20. Like the last hand, we should have raised a 25, whatever. The small blind, a well done old man, calls, and the limper calls, and we're three ways to a flop. Flop comes, nine, seven, four, rainbow. They both check, and I decided to check back. I wasn't really sure what to do in game. I think I made the right choice by mistake or in retrospect, because on the turn, they're just gonna play their cards kind of face up as they do here. Turn comes king of hearts, bringing back door flush draw and they both snap check, they're just over it. The small blind has his cards in his hand, like ready to muck. So I bet $75, I over bet the pot. I, I don't think I need to even bet that big. Like once I pick up on the fact that they're both over it, I could do the same thing for 40, whatever. They both fold and we pick up the pot. This hand is for everyone who says poker's dead. Listen to this ridiculousness. Under the gun limps, under the gun plus one limps. Hijack raises to 15. Five of us call, we're one of those five with queen nine of hearts in the big blind. We're six ways to a flop, and it comes jack five four, two hearts, one spade. So we flop the flush draw, but who the fuck knows what that means in a six way flop. Anyway, flop checks around. Turn comes six of spades. So it's a two tone board. It checks to the original razor in the hijack. He bets $25. The button calls, small blind folds, we call. Old man under the gun calls, and then under the gun plus one raises to 175. The hijack folds, the button folds, and it's back on us. There's one person left to act behind us. It's the old man under the gun. And this should be an easy fold, but we have degen rationalization syndrome. And it starts telling us some valid points. It goes, yo, Ryan, look, this, this old guy under the gun, he's never going to re-raise. So you don't need to worry about that. You're going to get to see a river if you call. And pot odds, bro. Do probably pot odds. And I'm like, yo, that's a good point. Let me calculate them. But I don't actually try to calculate them. My brain is too COVID-y and foggy. So I just kind of look at the pot and I'm like, yeah, it's probably good enough. <laughs> so we call. Old man, another gun folds. We're heads up to a river, which comes a seven of clubs, bringing a four liner to the straight. We have queen high, you know. Against certain players, I probably wouldn't bother trying to bluff them off their set of sixes or whatever it is they have. But because this guy knew the dealers and he's a rag, and I know that he knows, or I hope he knows, 
that he d has no eights. We have all the straights, all of them. He never, ever has a straight. We, all, we, ha we are the only person left in this hand who has the nuts, right? Or even just an eight for a straight. So we have to bless. We bet $400, and he doesn't really take that long, even though it feels like a while, and he folds. So we shouldn't have got to the river at all in any form, but at least we made one fucking decision, right? I'm not going to lie, in game, I was really proud of myself and gassing myself up for making this river bluff, and it is a cool move, but I shouldn't have been there. It's like if I wake up out of a blackout and I'm in the lion cage at the zoo, just because I escape it successfully, that the, the moral of the story isn't how good I am at escaping lion cages. It's like, Ryan, what are you doing in your life that you woke up in a lion cage? In this hand, early position limps $5, and the cutoff agrees to play horribly and limps the $5 as well. We're in the small blind, and we look down at 10-10. We raise it up to 35, and both limpers call. We are three ways to a flop. It comes. Queen, six, four, rainbow. I bet $50, EP folds, and cutoff calls. The turn comes a two, and we don't think value betting again makes really any sense at all. He'd only call with better hands, so we check, and he agrees to check. River comes a three of whatever. We both check, and he has king-queen off. We lose. Now, look, I know it's not your job, but do me a fucking favor for once and hit the subscribe button. So it's an hour and a half into the session, and, uh, yeah, we're feeling okay. We're, we think we're developing a good feel for our table. But honestly, even if I was in a horrible fire accident and lost all my ability, all my senses, I could not feel literally, I'd still be in fine shape. We bought him for 1K. We got 1,300 in front of us. We're thinking about how amazing we did that queen nine hand, even though, as we know, we I played every street incorrectly except the river. When, you know, we're dealt ace king of clubs, under the gun plus one. We raise it up to 20. The button calls. And the small bind three bets to 100. Now it's back on us. And this is a, another of many cash game spots that are new to me that I'll learn, but 260 big blinds deep. I'm a tournament player. I just don't know what I'm doing with 260 bigs deep here. Um, I don't want to four bet and then get five bet jammed on or something and be uncomfortable calling off with ace king. In tournaments, you're just always trying to get it in because you're always shallow. So we decide to call and I asked Jamin Burton, another vlogger, check out his vlog for his opinion on the end. He's a cash game player. And he said, you can mix, it's fine. Um, so it's not as bad as I feared. But anyway, we call, the button folds, and we go to a flop. Flop comes jack, 10, deuce. The deuce was really a four, but it doesn't matter. What matters is it's a rainbow board. We have a backdoor flush draw, and spades end up with a backdoor flush draw. That's what's relevant. Uh, he bets 100, and calling seems to be the only thing that makes sense. So we go ahead and do that. And the turn comes the ace of spades. So it brings backdoor flush draw that we don't have. But now we got top, top. The opponent checks, and we decide to check back because I don't really know why, because because we're a little shook, uh, but Jamin Burton said that this is good because if we ever bet and get raised here, we're just vomiting if we ever have to fold such a good hand. So even though we think we have the best hand, we check back. Now the river comes. The last two pay you'd ever want to see, a king. You didn't, want to, you didn't want to run into a king here. Now queen gives him the straight. And the guy leads for 350. Nearly pot. Now I have to figure out, okay. And this is what I was thinking in game. Sometimes, you know, you, your post game analysis, as many of you know, is different than what you were thinking in game. But in game, I was like, okay, let's figure out how many queens this guy actually has. And right off the rip, I'm like, okay, no ace queen, no king queen. Both of those hands, he could three bet, would see bet flop, but he would definitely keep betting turn for value with both of those. Now, could he be value betting something other than a straight? No. People would just check with a four-liner here, I think, almost always. What I mean by that is if he has a set of aces, kings, jacks, tens, he's not going to value bet those. He's going to check and then maybe call or fold. So his only value hand is pocket queens. So if it's queens or a bluff, I think I have to call. And we call, and he has queens, not the bluff, so we lose. So even though we got the answer quote-unquote wrong here, I'm proud of how 
cogently we thought through the hand in game, which is not easy for us. And it's taken us a long time. We're still working on it. You know, I still need to remind myself to take a breath and think. Okay. So here's a silly hand. EP opens to 15 middle position calls. And we're in the cutoff with queen 10 of diamonds. We decide maybe out of tilt to three bet to $55. It folds to the small blind, who's only playing about $300, and he decides to four bet to 110. EP and MP both fold, and we decide that we have to call, even though we assume we're in really bad shape. The flop comes king 6 3. He checks, and we check back, planning to not put any more money in this pot, given how nutted his four bet seems. The turn is a two. He checks again, and we check back. And the river comes an ace. When he checks now, and it's on me, I'm thinking like, yo, wait, he hates this card if he's checking. And if he has hands like jacks, tens, queens even, I can get all of those to fold. Um, he has 185 in his stack, and there's 255 in the pot. If he has any clue of poker, I don't need to jam. It would make no difference in the amount of folds I get, jamming versus betting, say, around 100. Um, so I bet $75 expecting this to do the trick to have him fold out hands like Jack's. But, uh, I guess I went too cheap because he calls with... No, I got Jack's. Two Jack's. I thought that'd be... An, I went so cheap. I went so cheap with the bluff. I thought... Yeah, I thought yeah, 75 went so cheap. I went too cheap. Oh, what a fucking bum I am. At this point, we're a little tilted with our own play, so we go take a breather and double-check the pre-flop charts that we saw outside. We're relieved because the charts show that we have actually been playing fine, but we didn't know that when we'd go back to our table, there'd be really bad news waiting for us. So we just got, I don't know what happened, but the, the, the old man to our left got replaced with a competent-looking Asian who's under 100 years old. Like, so it was a big, big downgrade. Table got a lot worse. So we lose a couple of hands where we see a flop and have to fold the suited connectors and low pairs. Uh, we reloaded uh, 600, I believe. So we're playing 1K again when we're in the cutoff with king nine of clubs. Folds to the hijack who makes it 20. And we three bet to $60. This is a good, correct three bet as far as I'm concerned. But then we get cold callers. The small blind calls, the big blind calls, and the hijack calls. Not exactly what you want when you three bet, but whatever. We're four ways to a flop, and it comes nine, eight, five, rainbow. We have top pair in a three bet pot, four ways. They all check to me, and uh, I bet 150. I maybe could bet even bigger here, honestly, protecting bigger, but the big blind is the only one who calls. Turn comes queen of spades. It brings it back to a flush draw. And now the big blind does something so inappropriate, he might as well have put on a Nazi uniform and whipped his dick out. He donk leads into me for 225. I'm shocked, clutching my pearls, appalled. I don't know. I mean, I shouldn't even be thinking anything GTO in a part of the tree that doesn't fucking exist, but like, I know I'm, I can't fold here or I'm way over folding and exploitable, but like, this is just some live ridiculous shit. I probably can. I don't know. I call and the river comes an ace, he jams for 1100 and, and it's just like 100%. He had jack 10, his choice A, 6, 7, his choice B, or some set that he flopped, his choice C. I offer him $25 to, to see the hand. If he wanted 45, I'm like, dude, 25 is stupid enough for me to pay to see what I already know. Um, and yeah, we lose another big pot. Maybe I could have saved myself 225 on the turn. I don't know. Either way, either here or there, we're down $1,100 in the session. And... I don't mean to threaten your family, but like everybody you know is going to die unless you subscribe to this channel. Early position limps for $5. Middle position, new to the table, raises to 30. The hijack agrees and flats to 30. We're in the small blind with ace queen off. We're going to bump it up. We three bet to $150. The early position limper now calls our three bet, calls 150. And then the middle position raiser goes all in for 900, hijack folds, and we run out of the casino. We fold. All right, so in for 2K, out for six. We lost 1350. That didn't go well. Before we left, we found out there's a mandatory $300 video poker tax in Pennsylvania. And uh, yeah, if you like this video even a little bit, please subscribe, guys. Please, even if you didn't like it. Hit the booty bounce on the dance floor.
Now, he doesn't deserve any applause. He called with King Jack.